What to do, Top Plan? It's your boy, Tor from Top of Zeke. Back to you another video, guys. So, you've seen the title, you know what the video is about. So, today we're going to be talking about if pre workouts, energy drinks, and BCAs, if they can hurt your results while you're doing intermittent fasting, if you should even bother taking them in the first place. So, I've been getting this question, I swear to God, at least three times a day in my email, man. But I think it's a better use of time if I actually make a video about this so that in the future, when somebody actually asks me, I can just point them to this video. So, without further ado, man, let's not waste any time and let's begin this video. Alright guys, so before we begin this video, I have to make an announcement. So um you see guys, um rent is due. Actually I am a few days late. And also my fridge, um I have absolutely no food in my fridge. So if you guys don't mind. Pick up a shirt, support your boy. Ah, link in the description box below. That's the end of my shameless plug. Boom. So let's begin this video. So guys, to start this video, we're first going to start talking about pre-workouts and energy drinks. There seems to be a lot of confusion. I understand where this came from because in one of my older videos, I was cruising around town, enjoying myself, drinking a monster, and a lot of people in the comment section went, hey! They're like, oh my god, you broke a fast with the monster. A lot of you guys might have noticed, but monster energy drink, they don't only make one kind of zero calorie drink. I know a lot of people think that white monster is the only zero calorie drink they have in their roster. Actually, they make quite a lot of zero calorie drinks. So this was a drink that was causing all that ruckus. As you can see, it is a zero calorie monster, so it's totally fine. If you're taking a pre-workout or any drink during your fast, you can have it if and only if it is zero calories. Because obviously, if it's zero calories, that means you're not breaking your fast. But a lot of people think that intermittent fasting is an on or off switch, but this is simply not the truth, right? You actually need to pass a certain caloric threshold until you get out of the fastest state. Now, how many calories you need, uh, nobody really knows, but what I usually tell my clients and other people that care is try not to go above 50 calories during the fastest state. That means that if you have an energy drink that has like 10 calories, you're totally fine. If you have some sugar-free chewing gum, you're totally fine. Or if you have just a little bit of cream in your coffee, again, you're totally fine. Remember guys, we do intermittent fasting to make life easier, more flexible, not to become more rigid. But with that, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh no, but any drinks are bad for you, the insulin, the blah, 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 oh my god, please, guys. I am tired of all you insulin mofos sending me hate mail every single day, man. Seriously, guys, don't you have anything better to do with your life? All you need to do is just really relax, take a chill pill, smoke some ganja, enjoy the towel climb, guys, and take life easy. You obsessing about all those minute irrelevant details, it actually doesn't make it easier for you to get in shape. It just makes you more stressed out. But anyways, I'm done talking to you insulin mofos. Back to the video. A lot of people think that energy drinks are bad for you, and I'm gonna clear some things up. So first of all, when it comes to weight loss, I actually found this very interesting study about comparing water and drinks that had artificial sweeteners and caffeine and ironically the group that drank the energy drink they lost more weight compared to the group that drank water and what's even more interesting is the group that drank the energy drink their waist circumference was lower their blood pressure was lower their triglycerides were lower in fact a lot of their health markers were even better than the group that drank water now does that mean i'm going to start recommending energy drinks over water i mean of course not duh but it does make you think about why energy drinks get such a bad wrapped and i think why that is is because a lot of deaths in the past few years have been linked to energy drinks the first reason for a lot of deaths was because people were mixing energy drinks with alcohol and that is a very dangerous combination because when you mix energy drinks with alcohol you have no idea how drunk you're actually getting because of that caffeine so you end up drinking even more alcohol binge drink and you might actually get alcohol poisoning there's actually this big uh, controversy with this one energy drink a few years ago called four loco so four loco was pretty much an energy drink mixed with alcohol and these sell this in gas stations and guys i remember i used to drink these when i was in college man one for local you were lit man you were gonna be having a good time bro but when you cross the line and you had two four locals oh no man that is when you're gonna black out you wake up the next morning in some random house and then you're laying down on the floor naked mind you with some mac and cheese all over your chest and you're surrounded by a sea of fat chicks man dude my college experience was <laughs> pretty fun man sometimes i kind of miss it 
Uh, but anyways, yeah, mixing alcohol and any drinks is just not a good look. They really don't mix. They're very dangerous. Another reason why these things have caused deaths was because some of the people that died from drinking any drinks was because of overconsumption. So when I looked more into it, these people were drinking eight to ten energy drinks every single day. And I think some of you guys watching this, you can use some common sense and you can realize that that is not healthy. There's no way that drinking eight of these a day is actually going to be good for you. I mean, come on, bro. So really, when it comes to any drinks, it all comes down to more moderation they're not that bad for you as long as you do not overdo it right so how much of these can you take a day after doing some more research I've seen this number being floating around of you want to have about maximum 400 milligrams of caffeine every single day and then when you tend to go over this you might have some issues with your heart so guys if you have an energy drink try to stay below 400 milligrams of caffeine and you should be fine so that means if I have one of these I might have to curb my caffeine intake for the rest of the day but even with all this stuff that I'm telling you guys, I have to admit, I am pretty biased towards energy drinks because I drink them almost every damn day. I know, right? And I gotta be real with you. Monster is not my favorite energy drink. Not by landslide, man. I actually have a new addiction. So I bet a bunch of you guys are wondering if a bank paid me to do this video. Absolutely not. I have no affiliation with bank. I just absolutely love their product. But hey, if any of you guys are bang are watching this video, yo, hook a brother up. So now, uh, now that we're done talking about pre-workouts and energy drinks, let's move on to BCAAs, right? Now, in my humble opinion, BCAAs are just utter crap. Look, I know that every single person and their mama be drinking some BCAs, but honestly guys, if you're spending money on BCAs, you might as well do this. Get your wallet, right? Take the money out of your wallet and literally throw it down the toilet. You know what guys? Saving money is so overrated. Instead of putting my money in the bank, I prefer to put it down the toilets. Cause you know, it's not like I plan on having any kids and you know, and saving money for the college ones. Hmm. It's not like I like to go on vacations and trips, you know what I mean? It's not like I want to retire. I mean, I do want to work for the rest of my life. <sighs> Seriously, why save money? So retarded. <sighs> A few moments later. Oh my god, that's the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. Now, I can make an entire video about why I think BCAs are horrible, but I'm not going to talk too much about it in this video because I want it to be snappy. But if you guys want me to make that video, comment in the comment section below. BCAAs, why are they bad? So with that guys, even though I think BCAAs are absolute crap, I mean, if you taking a BCA is going to make you have a better workout, then honestly, take it. Same thing with pre-workouts and energy drinks, guys, because here's the thing, guys. Uh, when we're doing intermittent fasting, most of us do intermittent fasting because we are cutting, we're trying to lose weight, we're trying to maintain our muscle mass. And here's the thing, guys, maintaining your muscle mass is not only your diet, it's also your training as well. If your training intensity starts to drop when you're in a diet, you are actually gonna be at greater risk of muscle loss because your body sees no reason to maintain any muscle if your intensity keeps dropping. So guys, if you're taking those supplements actually makes you perform better in the gym then by all means take that shit it doesn't even matter if it's placebo because it has even been shown that placebo does work and that's actually what the whole supplement industry is revolved around which again is an entirely different video so i'm not going to go too deep into that so with that guys i am going to wrap up this video if you guys like this video man you know what to do go ahead and give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, man, go ahead and subscribe already because you know it is cool up in here. And to all my fellas, don't forget who we do it for, guys. The ladies, or should I say the beezies. Peace.